The portal gun is something that has kept the interest of fans for many years. Now, lots of people have speculated about how the portal gun actually works. Most people default to the reasoning that the portal gun uses wormholes, and if you've been browsing around YouTube, you've probably run into a lot of videos on that very topic. Wormholes take advantage of the flexible nature of space-time and make shortcuts between two fixed points. In the world of quantum theory, wormholes actually occur all the time. So much that there are hundreds of billions in reach at any given moment. However, there are a lot of issues with these wormholes. For starters, their size. Most naturally forming wormholes are so tiny that not even a quark could pass through it. On top of that, the smaller a wormhole is, the less time it's stable enough to pass through before the wormhole implodes and self-destructs. This could be solved by pumping it full of what's known as dark energy. For those who don't know, dark energy is like the opposite of dark matter. Instead of being an unobservable entity that emits force that binds the universe together, it's a force that pushes the universe apart. Focusing enough dark energy into a wormhole, in theory, could expand its size enough to push large objects through and last long enough to do so safely. Now, you may be saying, of course, this is how the portal gun works. However, this does not address the logistical problems with wormhole travel. You see, there are problems with connecting two fixed points in space-time, and the first is relative movement. Every time you calculate your movement, you do so relative to the Earth, as if it were a fixed point. However, this is not true when moving through wormholes. Wormholes movement, or lack thereof, is relative to space-time and not to the Earth. The Earth is moving quite fast relative to space-time. The Earth moves at 1,670 kilometers an hour around its axis. It orbits at 30 kilometers a second around the Sun, the Sun revolves at 828,000 kilometers an hour around the galaxy, and the galaxy moves at 600 kilometers per second through space. This means at any given time you're moving around 2.1 million kilometers an hour relative to space-time. The moment you open up a wormhole between two points in space, it will seemingly zoom off so fast that you cannot even register it appearing. And that's not the only issue. Even if you could fix a relative movement problem, there's still the problem of relative position. How do you calculate the spatial coordinates of any two points at any given time in reference to space-time? Most coordinate measurements we humans make are in reference to the Earth or the Sun. The idea of a completely new reference system is hard enough on its own, but then you have to factor in the expansion of space-time. Because space-time is constantly expanding, a system of points on space-time may change relative to any place you may want to go to. We today don't have any computers powerful enough to make such calculations to constantly readjust the position of portals to fit our needs. One final problem with wormhole travel is the idea of actually traveling through space-time. If your calculations are off, you could potentially end up in the right place, but at the wrong time. Although fictitious in nature, an example of this can be found in the TV series Stargate SG-1, where due to solar flare activity, the main cast was occasionally thrown backwards or forwards in time, when traveling through their own wormhole system. The power of the solar flare caused the wormhole to loop back onto itself at another point in time, rather than going to the intended destination. To create a handled system that addresses all these issues is unfathomable, even for an advanced research center such as Black Mesa. Uh, I, I mean Aperture Science. However, there is a different quantum physics mechanic that could be used for the portal gun that is already being experimented on in our world today. Particle entanglement is the concept that two or more like particles, such as electrons, can have their quantum state entangled with each other, causing them to no longer be able to act independently of one another. This concept of particle interaction was so complicated, it was suggested Albert Einstein never got a full understanding of this during his lifetime. Einstein referred to this as spooky action at a distance. This concept of quantum entanglement was recently proven by a group of scientists. They used entangled electrons, taped in the nitrogen voids of two artificial diamonds separated by nearly 1.3 kilometers. They found that when measuring the electron spin across the x-axis of two entangled electrons, the spin was always opposite of each other. Communication was taking place between the two. But how does all this spooky action relate to Portal? Well, if one person were to make a gun that entangles the particles on the surface of any two objects in such a way that they destroy any matter that bumps into them, then at any given moment, one portal would be destroying something while the other would be doing the exact opposite, creating something. 
the exact same something that the first portal destroyed. This would imply that every particle in your body would be completely annihilated and instantaneously recreate at the same time every moment you interact with the portals. Such a method would not violate the laws of potential energy as the object or person involved never actually moved. Rather, only the information of said object was carried from place to place. This still has one potential problem though, since the portals are always doing the opposite of each other. Instead of a perfect copy, the portal would create a mirrored copy. You might be thinking having your heart on the right side might not be that big of an issue, but we're talking about mirroring on the atomic level. Enantiomers are molecules that can have mirrored chirality. This means that, although they are made up of the same chemicals, the way the chemicals are structured are perfect mirrors of each other. Most of the natural chemicals in your body, such as sugars and proteins, are made up of the L-form chirality of the compound. But all these also have a mirrored form known as a D-form. Because our bodies are L-form, D-form does not work right in our body. This is the same concept behind many artificial sweeteners, because although they have the same chemical makeup as sugar, and they taste sweet, they are actually the D-form of the sugar, meaning the body cannot digest them. So they are not absorbed into the blood, which makes them zero calories. These D-form sugars are harmless, but D-form proteins cause issues. Prion diseases such as mad cow disease are caused when the deformed proteins are introduced in the body and start causing other proteins to flip to deform. Because L and D don't work right together, this causes the affected cells to essentially fall apart, leaving your brain looking like Swiss cheese. As a being of pure deform, your own body would work just fine. Well, fine that is, until you eat an L-form steak. Then you would have the same problems that sufferers of mad cow disease have. This problem, however, has an easy fix in the concept of the portal gun. If every set of portals are actually double portals, then you would be mirrored twice putting you back the same way you were in the first place. This is an issue the Test Happy Aperture Science Lab would quickly find out and address. So with that said, the portal gun is more likely to use the concept of particle entanglement rather than simply wormholes. The gun creates a set of double portals at each location, so that when you pass through it and are mirrored, you are unmirrored by the second portal, and thus appear unflipped. This approach solves a lot of problems that wormhole travel would create, and totally paints a different picture of how we imagine the portal gun. But now that I've dumped that on all of you, I'd love to hear your own thoughts on this topic. Do you have your own theory on how the portal gun works? Is there anything we may have missed or were possibly incorrect about in ours? And last, which of the portal games did you prefer? Let me know in the comments below. I want to give a huge shout out to Fakeness for their help on this video. I had the pleasure of meeting them after presenting at a convention, and this video was a direct result of us combining our talents. Without their knowledge, this video wouldn't have been possible, so for that, I am extremely thankful. And with that, thanks for tuning in to this deep dive into physics. If you'd like to join me on my YouTube voyage and help me with my science fair project, then the subscribe button is just what you're looking for. Thanks for watching guys and gals, and until my next video, cheers. You've made it to the end of the video, but wait, your quest isn't over yet. If you're looking for some more brain bending content, why not check out my video on To The Moon? We dive into the Inception-esque nature of the game and decipher what is reality and what is fiction. Or, if you'd like something different, you may enjoy my video on One Punch Man and how it breaks away from the monomyth style of storytelling. As always, there's a slew of other videos on my channel too. So regardless, I hope you enjoy. Well, you found me. Congratulations. You can stop.